Welcome to Breaking the Chains. I'm Bakita, and today I'll be talking to a teenage repat, Kenesha. She's going to tell us what it's like being a teenager moving to Ghana. Right? Yeah. How do you feel about living in Ghana? I like it. It's better than being over there. It's better than being in America because there's so many just bad things happening. How was it adapting to school? It was really difficult because I just got out of sixth grade and all my friends and I, we, were, we all use all these weird phrases and slangs and then when I come here everyone's speaking to me and telling me no, you have to write in a notebook, you have to do classwork and homework and exercise book. You have all these different kinds of English and different kinds of tree and God. And I was just so overwhelmed. I felt so over overwhelmed. Uh, overwhelmed. How did, do you wow. feel like you were accepted when you first got here? How did you, you know, how did you feel about being Well, when I... When I went to my first school, everyone, I was like a celebrity or something. It was like, oh my gosh, look at Kenesha, the American girl. And I was, everyone knew me, little kids, I didn't even know their names. They woke up to me, hey Kenesha. So yeah, I felt accepted. Everyone, all my my friends would show me um, where I'm supposed to write certain things and how to write them. And in and, Tree, and I saw the little backwards three i was writing e because i thought that was just a funny way of writing e um, so it was like no we're the right way they're writing it it's like and what oh. is that the backwards three what is it's, what does it mean it's a it's it's like it's like another kind of e in their language i'm not sure how to explain it but it's a a so it's the sound a mm -hmm. oh. but then e is a uh, okay how about in the neighborhood? In the neighborhood that you live in, um, what's your relationship like with your neighbors? Well, the girl who's right beside me, she goes to school with me, and we're cool. She's three grades below me, but we talk like we're in the same grade. And there's some kids who live across, diagonally across the street from me, and I go over there sometimes, and it's, it's cool. When you first got here, what were you expecting? Honestly, because I had seen pictures while my mom was here, so I, but if, like before I even knew that, I was expecting every single road to be dirt, the airport would be like a little shack, and all the airplanes would be like, you know, no medieval um, Indiana Jones planes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. When you arrived and you didn't see that, <laughs> what did you think? I was like, oh, it's kind of like Jamaica over here. Okay. It's kind of like Jamaica and it smells earthy and, oh, okay. What would you say is the major difference in your education here and there? Well, the biggest thing I really noticed was um, in America, they want to make sure that you can say it like this and make sure you can memorize it. Mm -hmm. And make sure you can memorize it at least long enough to be able to take the test. But they expect you to know it long enough to take some big tests in the end. Mm -hmm. But you don't want me to memorize it. But over here, they want to make sure that you know it. And, they, and every time they give you classwork, because now the um, seniors at the school have left, so now I'm technically, we're telling the form twos and threes of our school, so things from class six and form one are coming up in just simple classwork. And he says, if you can't answer it, then you're just not going to form three. You're going to stay right here. Uh -huh. So they won't just pass you to the next grade? No. My um, social studies teacher said that 
you that we have to be serious or so or at least two of us won't get accepted because there's um 32 of us in the class and he says no amount of begging no no amount of money nothing can get you moved on you just gonna have to be there or you could choose to go to a different school it's really up to you oh wow um i know one of the concerns that some parents have about um their children going to um local schools is caning um, I know that was one of my biggest concerns. Um, would you explain how does caning work? Really, as long as you do what you're supposed to do, you're not going to get caned. They came for not doing, for like not doing homework, classwork, um, doing things you know you ain't got no business doing, really. But let's say, like in homework, you get like. Two over ten. They're gonna cane you for that. If you so, if you don't do well on your homework, yeah, not doing well, not turning your stuff in, not doing things the right, yeah, you'll get cane. What is one of your biggest concerns here in Ghana? Really, biggest concern is keeping the dust out my eyes and make sure I wash my face because that makes my face break out bad. Really? So, <laughs> your biggest concern is keeping the dust out of your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> because wow. I can just like, I see I see kids that are like two feet tall walking up and down the street going to the store. I'm like, oh. Like, they walk around like, like, like they got the nerve to be walking around. Okay. It was. Well, if that little two-year-old can do it, I can, shoot. What would you change? The only thing I change is that I wish I could just kind of like ship everybody over here so then they can stay over here. We can all just live together like some kind of big happy ending, no worries, be happy. Something like that. Like, like some kind of a reggae song. Do you ever want to move back to the U.S.? I mean, I can't, I can't move back out there. I can't move back out there. But I do want to visit because, yeah. Why can't you move back? Moving back is just, I mean, like I just said, the crime rate is up 200% in Atlanta? Yeah. I live in Atlanta. I'm not, I mean, what? I'm not trying to be out there. If there was anything you could say to uh, other Africans born in America uh, about living in Africa, what would it be? I never thought of that before. I feel like a Miss America pageant question. Um, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> I would say... Yeah, there's a lot different. A lot I, I a lot I like to change about the way things are over here. But really, it's bad for all of us because what black person needs to be over there right now or ever, for that matter? And just earlier, we was mom was on Facebook. And I looked over. She didn't even watch the video. Some some little girl got beat for, got beat by a police officer for riding her bike in the parking lot. What? Who's trying to be out there? Who wants to be out there? I mean, come on, Mike. Let's be serious. If we could get out of there, come on. Where, where else are we going to go? China? They don't like us. You get treated. You get treated. You get treated like a person over here. What would you say to adults who are afraid to come to Africa? Afraid of what? I mean, I know the way they. I know the way they show Africa like it's just a bunch of bushes and woods and you got Mufasa and Zimba and them they have a family reunion in somebody's backyard and it's just and then then you got people who look to um coming to America and say and think we got zebras in the compound. No. I mean really the the most wild thing I seen out here 
it's some chickens and dogs in the streets. You have a lot of freedom here, a lot more freedom here mm -hmm. than you do in America, correct? Right. Um, what are the few things that kind of get on your nerves? Well, one of the things that kind of irked me is that I have a lot of hair and I don't not plan on cutting any of it. Like, what? Got me messed up. But the thing is, people think I'm like 18 or something because I let my hair grow because the thing is, when you're, when you're still schooling, they usually make you just cut off your hair. Mm -hmm. Walk around. Some some of these kids, I don't know if they're boys or girls. I'm not, I'm not trying to have that problem. Do you ever have a problem with children calling you a bruni? Yes, I do. First of all, I'm from the South. And I'm from the South. My mama is like a black revolutionary. <coughs> Just about Black Panther. So, <coughs> and I, I, don't, I don't take too kind of being called no white girl. Like what the white the only white thing on me is my teeth. What you talking about? Like I go off on people all the time. I call me a phony. You better get off my face. What? what is your response when you're called a brony? I'm like, don't call me a brony. I don't take. I was like, I don't like. I don't hang out with people who insult me. How dare you? Do they understand that it's an insult? I tell them it's an insult. Do you explain to them why why it's an insult? Yes. Do they understand what you tell them? Mm -hmm. And if they keep on, I just don't, I just get up and walk off. Mm -hmm. Like if you didn't get me before, you'll get me now. What has been your biggest challenge being here? Really? It's, it's school because they, because you got, I had to take French and treat. I never learned French a day in my life before this. The most French I ever knew was Bonjour and wee oui, wee. Oui. So I come here, they're talking. Anytime I'm uh, yeah, in the right composition, my talk every day at school. Hmm? <coughs> um, yeah. Oh, okay. And then in my old school, they had tree and God. I couldn't do the tree because the teacher wasn't translating. Went to God, it was a little bit better. But now at this school, I have no choice. I have to, I have to at least try. Mm -hmm. I'm literally on the class one level. My ICT teacher is teaching me from a class one, well, first grade, um, tree textbook. At least you're learning something, though. Mm -hmm. Also, there's the English component. You obviously speak American English, and they're taught British English here. Have you had challenges with? The British English versus the American English? Yes. Um, usually, like, my English teacher, like, I, I always remind myself it's British English, British English, because I, I, I have a pretty good idea of how British English works. I mean, apart from the slangs and stuff. So I usually try to remind myself to put the U in color, put the ME on program, put the, um, switch the E and the R in center. And stuff like that, but I usually forget. So when I so sometimes when I get my English classwork and homework back, I they I end up losing like like one more mark or losing half a mark for a misspelling. Yeah. What would you tell a teenager? The family the the family's preparing to move to Ghana, and they may be feeling some kind of way. Um, what could you say to encourage them um, about making this move? I mean, come on, it's Africa. <laughs> come on, like who doesn't want to go somewhere? I mean, I mean, you got the sweetest fruit in the world. I mean, you are in the center of the world. Absolutely. What is there not to love? I mean, the food is awesome and it's healthy. I mean. If you care about your weight, and then, like, if you find some friends out here, and you and your friends hook up, y'all go someplace, y'all eat some food, we chilling and dancing, go to the beach like me and my friends did last week. Oh, so you ain't have to worry about nothing else. 